May 26, 2023. Just want to show right now where this main line is. Here's the construction here. So, uh, Okay. Okay, here it is. Coming up here on the right. Main line. And there's the one that was uh, stalking the house. Tall, slender. Uh, he could be Hispanic. He could be Caucasian. He has a like uh, kind of curly hair. Needs a haircut. Now let's go see. Uh, you see the post office is right there. Okay, again, this is May. Oh, let's get this. Main line. Had to turn a little bit against my body. It's not used to that type of turning. But, here's Diamond Gems. Here's the big glass building that also houses the parole office. Kearney Street and 3rd Avenue. There's a Radiant Beauty Supply. Okay, now shortly after this man left in Mainland, mm -hmm, or whatever their name is, I just showed you, because these construction workers are also part of it. Okay. Then uh, some Hispanic youth came in a silver car, four door. I believe it was a Toyota, I wrote it down. Uh, Latino brunette male and a Latina brunette female. So these people are stocking the house. Right there.
No, do not do that, Cheeto. Don't jump out the window. That would not be good for you. <laughs> okay. All right. I think uh, we're going to close it up for today. Today's date, again, is uh, May the 26th, 2023. A lot of activity today. They still have that abandoned cart there pointing at my house. I do have signs in my window on the other side that speak about the uh, ongoing elder abuse, Penal Code 368. Wasn't able to uh, catch up with the two young Latin couple that came in right after the mainline guy left. But um, um, I'm hoping for justice. I really am. Because this isn't just something that's recently been happening um, stalking and and covert terrorism and trespassing at, as well has been taking place on my property since before my mother passed away um, I noticed it before my sister's murder and uh, she started to watch the house in her car and she would call me uh, eventually her car was stolen by her son and her phone and uh, the excuse they used was that she wasn't mentally in her mental faculties capable of driving and uh, or having the phone it made no sense but he took her phone because on her phone it had her addresses and contacts of her people and nowadays we don't normally remember things like we used to back in the day we actually have our phones memorize all our numbers and information so if you take away someone's phone it's like taking away their ability to get help or to uh, to get their addresses and phone number contacts of their friends and once they isolated her that way she was murdered and I saw her body on the day that I was told she was murdered, which was November uh, 20th, 2020. Um, it was reported that she uh, died of a, a normal death, but there was nothing normal about the way her body was. And it looked as though her whole uh, unit where she was living studio had been ransacked. Now I know she had some dirty dishes that, that were there, but it did appear like somebody literally went through everything and everything was thrown across the floor. There was no clear space at all on the floor except where her body lay dead in a straight position, not even in a fetal position. And so, uh, so that's uh, what we're dealing with. 
and uh, the crimes are being covered up, not just by the San Diego Police Department, but as well by the Chula Vista Police Department. And uh, whenever I call for them to come, they don't show up. They give an excuse to say that they're overwhelmed and understaffed. But when others in the area call, they're like Johnny on the spot. It is more than obvious that I have been blacklisted and it is several reasons why. My involvement in the Tillery case, my living in this beautiful home that my father bought, um, my living in a racist neighborhood, and also um, I do believe that there's religious persecution as well. And so when all of that together is connected, it makes for literally, you know, a network of local terrorist activities. And now they've outsourced it to the gangs. They've outsourced it to the local high school and school aged children because they know that if they do get caught, they're going to be going to court as a juvenile and not an adult. They need to change those laws. If these children are old enough to commit a crime, then they're old enough to do the time in an adult prison. That's just the way it needs to be. In the South, they were murdering young black boys that were eight years old. You can look up the history, but here they allow these people to commit crimes and then they cover up their crimes. And um, this area should also be videoed because right there on the corner where I turned around, that parole office sends dangerous people stalking and walking through the neighborhood. I am over 61 years old. I've done nothing to warrant these attacks, except that my father, a black man, had the audacity to buy this house over 30 years ago. And because of this, this community has been very hateful. Before they really started this attack, which was, they really got bold with it after my mom's death. My father would tell us, don't be out there in the front yard. I don't want them knowing that black people live in this house. So after he moved here, he realized that he unknowingly bought a house in a racist sundown town. And the people did used to spit at us. It used to be primarily a white neighborhood then, but now it is primarily a Latin neighborhood and they've mixed. And in, in terms of being white supremacists, I will say that the KKK now will take the Mexican as well as the white man into their organization. So the racism just grows. It's sad because they rode on the backs of the civil rights of the blacks, and then they turn around and stabbed us in our backs. This is what we get for advocating for rights for other people other than ourselves. We need to advocate for rights for ourselves and stop being concerned about everyone else because once they ride on our backs, they throw us to the wolves. They become the wolves. And then they, they join, literally join hands with the oppressive white supremacists in the area. They marry them, they join their organizations, and they hold up their hate crimes. 
A lot of the people are military or, or children of the military, but then there's a lot of them who are not. So there is a lot of them that aren't military. And uh, unfortunately, their hate is so great that they can't leave me alone to live my life in peace because I, that's all I want on this corner. That's all my dad wanted was for his family to live in this nice, beautiful, big house. But now I've got problems with the trust. I got property manager problems. I've got all kinds of issues going on with the police not responding to my calls. And a lot of, a lot of stalkers, a lot of agents, undercover agents, certainly a lot of them in white cars like that. So, you know, they only seem to come, like I said, when other people in this area call, like for example, my neighbor, Mr. Day, they're Johnny on the spot. When anything goes down at uh, 764 Del Mar, uh, they're right there, okay? That's where where my neighbor shares a common fence with me is. That's the man who, when the, pol the police came on the 29th of August, 2021, about gunshots being fired five outside my home, they didn't come to me. They went straight to Mr. Day, whose dog was barking with my dog. This cute little guy right here, <laughs> and uh, warned me literally, literally moments before the, the gunshots went off. I was awake at the time and my lights were on th throughout the house. Um, I heard the gunshots. It was after midnight. So at the, the first part of the, the, the new day of uh, the 29th of August, and uh, nothing, nothing was, was requested of me in terms of, hey, you know, you heard gunshots, knock on the door, let's investigate. They totally missed this house. Now, the reason why I believe they did it was because I had already told my property manager, who I was told was an ex-cop, Mr. Brad Bickles, that if I ended up murdered, I wanted him brought up on charges along with my son, Eric Troy Jackson. But now I think what needs to be added to that is a total investigation of these people that reside in the area. The ones at seven, six, one Del Mar, the ones in the, this brown house here with the trailer and up the street, there's more. Bob Day at 764 Del Mar Avenue and the people at 765 Del Mar Avenue. And of course, there's the people that my sister, Trieste Arrington's son was involved with by dating the white woman who lives at 777 Del Mar. They even moved into a, uh, an apartment together on 2nd Avenue. I know this because years ago, he asked me for help in moving furniture and things from our house into their new apartment. And it's over there by, uh, I think it's called 98 Degrees, a uh, little shopping center. If you go too far, you end up in that little shopping center. So um, this, this is crazy that this is all going on and they know it's all tied in together. There were also when my son Enoch was working at Fuddruckers before the COVID shutdown, multiple nights, almost every night, they had police stationed right at this corner where you see this lemon tree and they were parked right at the corner 
and they had their lights out and they would flash their lights whenever Enoch would come home from work. Literally after they flashed their lights, it would be minutes, not even that, when Enoch would arrive and park into, into the driveway here at the house. And they, they would be signaling by flashing their high beams towards, you know, the, the, the other side here where Bob Day lives on the other side of me. There was also another car. I couldn't tell if it was a police unit. I think it was that was also parked on Church Avenue and Kearney Street where the murder took place. But they were actually in the front of the house instead of the side of the house. I don't have that ad uh, address. And um, they would also flash their lights in response to the police on this end flashing their lights so they could see the light at night. So they've been doing this surveillance of me, including the police. And like I said, this place called Mainline Security, which is right around the corner from me on 3rd Avenue. I had to go and take the picture, of course. Uh, I couldn't go right away because the, the lawn man was doing the lawn. And it was no coincidence that shortly after I videoed the man from mainline surveillance right there around the corner next to the parole office, that the young Latin couple that's frequently stalking my house, a young Latin boy and a, a young Latin girl they look to be definitely maybe under 20 they could even still be teenagers but they're frequently sitting over here in a silver four-door car i believe it's a toyota i i tried to write down their license plates and make and model um but again you know sometimes i'm i don't have my camera i've been asking the trustee for cameras here because i kept telling him since 2019 when i was attacked that I need cameras around here because we had people who were coming right up to my door and knocking on my door. Some of these local residents, like police officers, waiting till dark to harass me by beating my door down heavy as though they were random police officers. And at that time, my sister was alive and they were asking, why is her car parked in your driveway? I thought nobody could park in your driveway. Something that I only told Anthony Washington when he tried to park his car when he was working for this lab corps or something like that. And I said, you cannot park your car here. It's not your home. And that is a business car. Should something happen to that car on our property, your lab core people could sue us. And you have no authority to be here. You were evicted from this place for theft and not paying your portion when my mother said pay rent after you started stealing things. So, um, so Anthony, who grew up in this neighborhood, my son, who also grew up in this neighborhood, and Keith Arrington, who grew up in this neighborhood, all of them have ties with people in this neighborhood. Every single one of them. Eric went to school with the guy who lives next door to Bob Day. Keith Arrington dated this racist woman who just wanted to get her... Uh, jungle fever on uh she lives with a a latino man who is a very mean monster 